Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft 2. It's gonna be a match between Patience and Innovation here on Nightshade, the latter edition from Katowice 2020. The group stages. Top left hand corner, it is the blue Protoss player, Patience. And in the bottom right, it is a very popular Terran player, Innovation. Man, I love Innovation. I remember when he first came onto the scene, Husky casted some of games of his. Said he is very young. He's transitioning from a Brood War to StarCraft 2. And he's going to be an incredible Terran player. And that was correct, man. And Patience is another up-and-coming player here. Well, Innovation's already established, but back then he was up-and-coming. And I kind of feel like Patience can beat Innovation here today. So this is a Patreon cast over at patreon.com slash falconpaladin. It was posted... The week of June the 10th. If you're seeing it on that week, thank you very much for supporting me on Patreon for at least $1 every month. That gives you access to this a month before it posts on YouTube. And let's get right on into it here. Dun, 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 dun. Probe scouting here is Patience. Just, you know, walling off his ramp here. Versus Adepts. Here is Innovation and oh, SCV scouting as well. Hmm. Hmm, Reaper? Yep, the Reaper's name here is Jeff E. In the distant past, Jeffrey was a rich magistrate that had it all. A bit too much fun was had on his part, showing how dark the human condition can get. Hmm, that's a good start. Went too far and got caught in his own personal island. While in his jail cell, being the coward that he is, he decided to try and take his life as he knew too much. But Karma had a different plan for him. As he sat in his cell, looking for a cord to do the deed, a warm white light started to overtake him. All he could see was light and a ringing in his ear, which made him dizzy. As the brightness started to fade... Man, this is a uh, involved name here. Uh, started to fade... Jeff noticed he wasn't in Kansas anymore. He looked around and saw a group of people in a circle, him in the middle. He noticed that they all had fancy, shiny rifles. Some shimmered in and out of sight. He heard a loud echo in his head, but didn't see anyone's mouth moving. Death is too easy for you, the voice said. You have to suffer the worst fate of all. You will be recycled into the Reaper program. P.S. Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> so my personal theory on the Jeffrey Epstein stuff is that, yes, he did kill himself, but he was allowed to do so in a situation where he should not have been. Because, like, honestly, if he knows all your secrets... Uh, it's easier for him to kill himself, you let him do it, than it is to murder him, right? There's less evidence that way. And just what went down, basically the cameras malfunctioning and a guard being asleep on duty, it's just, it's too much. It's just too much. He was in a situation where he had tried to commit suicide previously, had failed at it. They put him in a place where he should have been observed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He wasn't, and oh, he killed himself. Surprise. So yeah, to me it's just... Look at this, Reaper keeps hopping up here for Minnow. He's just like scouting, I guess, if there's more gateways up here or what, but it's fine. Meanwhile, this proxy... Oop. This here proxy Twilight Council down here for Patience is pretty interesting. I like that a lot. So yeah, when, when I say Epstein didn't kill himself, I just... I know it's easier to say that Epstein was allowed to kill himself, which doesn't have the quite the same connotation. But I think he wanted to die as... Oh, there he goes. Jeffrey's out. He wanted to die because he knew it would be worse for him if he stayed alive. And he should not have been allowed to die. He should have been forced to testify at, for whatever it was. And it maybe, it maybe he wouldn't have said anything, but it was something that we should have been able to try and do. That's all I'm saying. All right. Dark Shrine coming in. What? Is he going... Wow. He's going two base DT here. Phoenix in production. Oracle cruising around. We have an Oracle name, too. Ah, heck, let's use that as long as they're here. Already killed the Reaper. Oracle name is Palkin Valadin, a bad R Starcraft 2 caster from another dimension. He refused to cast Brood War or low-level LOTV games, and so his fans stuffed him to a, a, an Oracle suit. He is the anti-Falcon Paladin. Yeah. I'm one of the few people on planet Earth that cast both Brood War and Starcraft 2, I think. I'm on a pretty darn short list at this point. Another Oracle coming out here. Anyway, what is going on? Innovation here has got Cyclones. He's got Marines. He's pushing out with a Cyclone Marine comp. Which, to be honest, I kind of love. I don't know that I've seen this a lot. It's got a medevac in the mix, too. This probe does scout this and see that it's coming. It's immediate warping of some additional adepts here to try to hold it. Got the Phoenix for lifting a Cyclone or two. 
Stasis Ward coming up. Third base and a lot up. Just a sack. I think that's a sack third is what that is. I don't know. Patience wants to come out here and fight and save that third base. So he was a little greedy. Not going to have to cancel that third as a result. But there's worse things on Earth. Getting that refund is not terrible. D oh, it is DTs, man. He's just slow warping in DTs in here. And how many scans do you have available? One, two. Two scans are available. There's nothing in this bunker. He has to see this. Does he not see this? He's not on the screen. He's not looking at it right now, so he doesn't know. DT immediately killing two SCVs that were building stuff. Oh, man. Not bad. And this DT gets on into the natural base, but there's a scan available for this one, too. Innovation. How did he know? All right. So seven SCVs go down for two Dark Templar. Not a horrible trade. For anyone, to be honest. He doesn't know about any of this stuff. Hmm. Is it, I mean, is that something Inno does a lot? Does he just keep a little more than he needs for a mule so he can scan if he needs to? Maybe he just he's felt it, right? He felt the potential for Dark Templar and was like, let's just not call down mules instantly at this point. Let's do it when we have enough energy to scan left over and we'll be in a much better place. And he was. That could have been horrendous for him. That could have been like 15, 16, 8, 20 SCVs if he didn't have any scans available because there was no Raven. The Raven's on the way now. There was no missile turret. Engineering bays are here, obviously. I guess there's a missile turret there now. But Meanwhile, a landed Viking gets five pro kills. What? All right, landed Viking. Aren't you fancy pants? The fanciest. He answers as he dies. Third base coming in again from Patience. Third base on location here for Minnow, but he's not really lifting it at this point or landing it either. Kind of feels like he's on his back foot. PVT is in an interesting spot in the meta, I would say. For a while there, Terran fans were complaining that Protoss was too overpowered in the matchup, and then without really changing anything in the like in the balance, all of a sudden Protoss players are complaining that Terran are too good. So it's like... I don't know, man. Feels like we're in a good spot if both races can complain that the other side is overpowered within six months of each other with no balance changes, right? Players are adjusting. Players are changing their timings. They're changing their compositions. They're making different choices. And as a result, things are changing, man. Time keeps slipping into the future. Third base landed here for innovation. And by landed, I mean... Hold in. Whoa. He feels really worried that this army could come out and kill him, which I can't blame him for. I mean, most of them. Yeah. He has a lot of army, though. Why is he sitting inside the main? What's he worried about? He's worried about more DTs warping in. Maybe a warp prism showing up and causing some problems. He's really, really sitting at home for a reason I don't fully understand. Income here is... Whoa. I was favoring innovation for a minute there, but it's back up at Patience's side. I gotta say, that's... Probably related to mules in some level. That marine gets blasted to death by Phoenix laser beams. Concussive shells on the way for here for innovation. Bunch of widow mines out for Inno, which indicates to me what is killing stuff. Hmm. Two probes go down. Not a big deal. 63 to 56 workers for patients right now. Uh, Colossus in production. Colossus is going to be the splash damage of choice for Protoss. If you're playing Protoss, you don't have splash damage by like the 10 minute mark. You're probably going to die. Maybe even earlier than that. Because Terran's just going to have all of this bio. All of it. And if you only have things like Zealots and Stalkers, you're not going to have a good time with it. So you want Disruptors, or you want Colossus, or you want Storm, or sometimes all three. Por que no los... Uh, what is it? Porque no los tres. Does that even work? Why not three? Anyway, force field's pretty good here. I gotta say, units are streaming through. Though patience, backing up, backing up. His first Colossus is on the scene, but he doesn't have extended thermal lance yet, which sucks. You want to have that upgrade? Stasis does not finish before he gets burned down. Animation coming up a ramp. Feeling pretty confident that he can do this thing. Patience, nice widow mine hits are coming across. Colossus burning down a lot of this bio though, not taking any damage from anything right now. Another widow mine burrows. The fire's on it already dead adept. That was not a good fire. And Patience is able to hold this thing off, I think. Just barely. Sticks of tank fire on that Colossus. The immortal is alive with all of like six HP, has four kills. 
Stasis catches some of Innovation's bio. His buddies just leave them all to die. And good hold, man. That was a really nice hold. I'll let Innovation take his third base, though, which is not super great. This DT trying to find some stuff to kill, but there's turrets covering most of the area where he wants to go. So, yeah, he's not going to have a good time with it. Where's your scan? Where's your scan? So he doesn't have scans here. Oh, he does, just barely. But it's too late. The DT is away into the darkness. Who knows where it has gone? Ooh, Ghost Academy. Coming in from Inno. This is the one thing that people have said have allowed Terran to do better against Protoss now than they have in the past six or eight months. Here's the Enhanced Shockwave upgrade for EMPs. It's not new, but Terrans, it took them a while to figure out how good it was. And now, holy smokes, it's good. And there it is. Enhanced Shockwave on the way. Ghosts in production. Patience kind of needs to win this thing before that happens because the EMPs... Nice Widowmine shots. That might push him back, actually. Just like, oh, took Widowmine shots. Must regenerate shield on, well, for example, these stalkers. But yeah, I mean, knocking 100 shields off stuff is so stupid good. It's not as good as EMP and Brood War, where it removes all of the shields of the enemies in the affected area, which is insane, but still good nevertheless. Good, uh, again, good radius on that shockwave. It's not done yet, but Disruptor's on the way for patience. Zealot got a Marauder. He was outnumbered like 5 to 1. Good for you, man. Way to follow your dreams. Alright, so Enhanced Shockwave is done. Blink is done, which is nice for these engagements. Fourth base for Patience. Running pretty heavily and saturatedly right now. It is uh, 73 to 67 workers in favor of Patience. Again, just the up and down swings here. That last swing, not as big for Innovation. So he might be in a bit of trouble economically right now. But he's going to sneak around this bottom side and find the Dark Shrine. As well as the Twilight Council, which kind of sucks. I mean, he isn't nearly need these things for anything right now because he already has the Templar Archives and he already got Blink and he already got the uh, Charge so Twilight Council a little bit irrelevant at this moment is he trying to trap Ooh. I'm gonna try to trap these units in here because they do not have an exit strategy they don't have a medevac which is your exit strategy <laughs> DT is up along the right side trying to make stuff happen. So a lot of bio died there for buildings that weren't super important. I'm not sure the patience is going to bother rebuilding that dark shrine, to be honest. We've got a fifth base coming up on the left side, too. Holy shamoly. What is going on right now? Patience, feeling good. Feeling like there's more to life than uh, just defending. What a... Wow. Ginormous charge lot attack into the natural base. Going after supply depots and whatnot. But Innovation says, I'm going to take down your third... Look at the Viking count on these Colossus. The EMPs are great, too. A couple ghosts died in the process. Nova comes down, catches those Vikings right in the face. But the third base is toast. Zealots killed 14 SCVs there, though. And they got some supply depots. Not enough to supply block innovation, but still. Nice split against the Nova. Trying to hold right now. It's a lot of output, and there's no Colossus here to help. The Novas do catch a couple Marauders and a ghost. That's big, but the Disruptor taking hits too. There's another big Purification over to hit there, and the Blink 4 to take down the Medivac. I'm telling you, Patience is really good. Really good at StarCraft. So he loses his third, but he's got his fourth and his fifth running. I think Patience might win this game. I really do. He's just economically in a great position. He's got more workers than the Terran player does. He has more bases right now. Just kidding. He has the same number of bases, but he's going to replant that third and be up again in a minute. Innovation, though. Three threes coming in. Blinks on top of this bio. Nova hits from the backside. Surprise! Surprise disruptor hits coming out of nowhere. Spell Innovation taking some serious damage from them today. Army supply is 55 to 61. It is not big army supply for anyone at the moment. But if you're running from stalkers, it's a bad time. Ooh, that ghost, though. Ghost is down. There's not enough bio here. Ooh, God, I had to blink forward. Partially to dodge the Nova and partially to catch this bio. Another couple Marines go down there. Just by attrition right now. Eight kills, 11 kills on those disruptors. Doing some work. Innovation's getting the EMPs off like he wants to, but he's not really able 
to happily expand as much as he wants to. He keeps losing the Metavax, too. Again, a way you beat a Terran player who's going bio is kill his Metavax. He's killed, uh, he has five. He's lost four. Okay, so lost half of his Metavax so far. It's a good start for patience. This is a good PVT. This is really nice. I didn't get to see this one when it was live. I'm enjoying it. Twilight Council getting replanted from patience. I honestly don't know what for. Unless he wants to go... No? Unless he wants to go back to DTs, I guess. Oh, ghosts. EMP off, but both ghosts die. Did three ghosts just die there? Is there enough bio is the question. The disruptors. Sending them Novas out with a straight up engagement with the bio is not going to work out well, and it hasn't been. Probe's dying over this way thanks to a couple Marines wandering up the left side of the map pretty much all by their lonesome to die. Three probes got killed anyway. Oh, oh, do not allow him in here. That's a really scary place to hang out, man. That's really, really scary. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, that Nova doesn't happen because he's focusing down. Okay, was focusing down. Oh, did that met? Oh, both medevacs died. The attack down to the south, though, pretty dangerous. This Colossus with extended thermal lens is trying to stay out of range of this bio. Doing all right with it. Does go down, but the warping zealots help save the day. Coming up with not full medevax by any stretch, but patience is in a position to deal with an innovation on the right side, expanding to a fifth base like a boss. Man, yeah, this has been really back and forth. Look at innovation. That dip was a big one. So it's big dip, medium dip, small dip, huge dip. Which the dips are good for innovation because it's an income advantage for him. Yeah, losing that third base for patience hurt his ability to keep up economically. But it's back now. Once again, stalker dis... Oh my gosh, the hits! The hits, though. But unloading into the natural base. Going after, well, workers and cannons. Zealots jumping on top of these dudes. Not bad against Marauders, Zealots are. And I, they're not even really trying to run. Everybody's dead. Oh, wait. They're running. Never mind. We're good. Pickup. Pickup does happen. 181 to 156 supply. Innovation. Make it a comeback here. His production tab is massive. His army supply is good. He's got the income that he wants. He's expanding again to the south. He's feeling extremely comfortable at this stage of the game. Worker count is bigger for Innovation here, too. He needs some godly disruptor hits here. Or, you know, just blinking on top of the entire army and wiping it out with the four Colossus you have because Inno doesn't have any Vikings at all. That will also do. Jeeves. Is he serious? Oh, yeah. Well, he's gonna... He's hiding out. The Metavax are hiding out at this point. Patience needs to go. The longer he waits, the more Vikings are gonna be out for innovation. And I think he's gonna do it. He's got a nice big army right now with good upgrades. Actually, 2-1-1. Where are your additional upgrades? Patience. If you lose this game, I'm going to blame it on the fact that you're not on 3-3 on anything. And innovation is. Rocks down for easier access to defend this base. Army sneaking up. Innovation. Oh, the recall, though. Look at the recall. How many probes die? Three. Three probes die, and everybody here is in a lot of trouble. He has to flee. Nice. I mean, the recognition there from Patience and getting that recall off was nice. I mean, it's a long cooldown and it's shared by all Nexuses. So you can't do it all the time, but when you, you know, when you can, you can. Oh, Medivac down. That Medivac has three HP. Is not making out of there alive at all. More Stalkers at the top here getting a blink on top of these Marauders and killing them. Bonus versus Armored versus Bonus versus Armored. If that makes any sense at all. Guys, are, how are they doing this? Their medevac has no HP at all. Well, they're all going to get... Oh, hang on. Well, they all could have died there, but instead just three did. Uh, Stalker's getting into Inno's third base, causing problems. The attack to the south is not doing very well. But 11 SCB is getting killed here until the bio shows up and the Blink Stalker say, See ya. That Marauder does have two kills at the end of the day. Not terrible. That medevac has three HP, which is bad. This game is really good. Oh, two ghosts getting nova would there. Another one gets nova would uh, Okay, that is not a hit. That's one way you can deal with the disruptors is jumping on top of them and killing them before the nova explodes. It is risky, 
And it is a gambler's mentality. These marauders are not even running. What the heck? Okay, they ran. Oh, the engagements, though. The Colossus getting hits. The Viking count is humongous. The Vikings landing to do bonus damage versus mechanical right there. God, I don't even know at this point who's going to win this thing. Well, it's a free disruptor, and that's your good game. All right, all right. Innovation <laughs> manages to win that thing in 20 minutes in 10 seconds. Hit that like button if you enjoyed that match. Woo. Yeah, Innovation just had the income advantage. He was expanding so well towards the end of the game there. Army supply at the end is 117 to 56. It's so, like, I want to... Where did that start? It was even. Where did that start to go bad? So that bio dies. Patience is looking pretty good. It's the Vikings, man. The Vikings just wrecked all the Warp Prism and all of the Colossus in about half a second. And then all the Zealots died, and it keeps plummeting from there to 60. Yeah, that was it. That was the engagement that won the game for Innovation. Yeah, again, I just I feel like <laughs> there was a window there, right? There was a window there for Patience when he had a lot of Colossus, and there weren't many Vikings out to push. But that can be hard to take advantage of against somebody like Innovation who is aggressively trying to kill you the whole time. So, end of the day, not a huge army for Innovation. It's 19 Marauders, 23 Marines, and 5 Ghosts. I mean, it's not like maxed. I mean, it is maxed. But it's 80 workers. And I guess the Vikings are part of the play, too. Is that really a maxed Terran army? Look at that. 9 Vikings, 19 Marauders, 23 Marines, and 5 Ghosts. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, 38 probes died, 34 SCVs went down, 10 ghosts got killed, 5 remaining at the end of the day. Uh, disruptors killed today, 12. There were 2 remaining. I think the disruptors did pretty well, honestly. Innovation took some serious hits. Uh, there were very few Novas that didn't do anything, which is really nice for patients and maybe a little bit sloppy from Innovation, but he got the win anyway. He managed to expend a whole bunch, take down a couple of patient spaces, be everywhere, and then have enough Vikings to destroy the Colossus that patience is so reliant on. And that was it. <sighs> Hoorah. All right. Well, uh, that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and your Patreon cast. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.